It's always been difficult to get children to write. This was the first year I've had an, almost an entire class say that writing was their favorite subject. And I think most teachers in America will tell you that it's very difficult to get your kids to write. It's very easy for me to get my kids to write. They've, they've been writing all day today and they haven't complained once. So by asking them to take photos of things that they care about really helps them find a door to open to start writing. I really enjoyed writing about my community. We had to write a story of our neighborhood and we had to pick like a word and my word so I picked good. Outreach programs are great because you help kids, you get out in the community, you connect schools and communities with culture organizations and it's, it's fabulous. But sometimes it can be um, a one-shot thing. And with Literacy to Photography, we, we realized that it had the potential to have long-lasting impact if it was done the right way, which means that we just didn't go into one classroom or connect with one teacher. Um, we're interested in going to a school and connecting with the administration and a team of teachers and parents who advocate for arts access and for improved communication with community in the classroom and really having them work as a team to support a learning through photography program at their school and then having that, that creates a great foundation for it to really grow and not just impact one classroom but potentially impact that entire school. Research shows that kids who are actively engaged in the arts in schools have better attendance, have higher test scores. I mean, the research is there. It states all this stuff. So to have a program like this and to build on it and to, to hope that they get to a, the next level, the next school level, where they have a strong art program, that would be fantastic. You know, to, to be able to continue this on. I mean, one of the things that I love about this school is we have really talented kids here, but talented in ways that are not traditional. So this program gives them access to those talents they may not have thought they had, either through writing, which is, oh, I hate writing, but you know, I'm, I'm actually good at it, you know, or taking a beautiful image. So those are ways that we can have our kids show off their talents, but there are so many other ways that, you know, I wish we, we could do more. The kids are here. LTP, the kids are creating their own writing based on their own life. And um, when they first look at a photograph, you're giving that photograph a voice, so you can't go wrong. That person can say anything you want them to say or anything you think they would be saying. So the pressure's off because we're all kind of starting at a level ground, and then, you know, they're using their imagination to decide what this person would be feeling and thinking and what they would be saying. I am very disappointed because I couldn't pay my rent. <coughs> then the owner decided to kick me out knowing that I have kids. But I, but I don't have any 
family members nearby. So one day, a police officer saw this laying down in the alleyway with a covering that was a cardboard box. So the officer decided to take them to a shelter. One day it was not, it was Monday at 9 a.m. She was thinking what she had to do to make her kids have a better future. I always believe that kids need creativity in the classroom and they need a way to express themselves. It can't just be all reading and math and memorizing and learning skills. You need a way to express yourself somehow. And that's kind of died out in schools because of the focus on testing. Learning through photography has kind of brought that back in because we're being given the opportunity to, you know, use the program in the classroom to, to feed that creativity. Whereas like in other classrooms, even in the school, like they're not, like they're much more focused on reading and math. But the principal, you know, knowing that we're part of this program gives us that, that leeway to be able to do this writing, to be able to do this create, creative activity in the classroom. One of the things I love about this program is it actively engages our students. They have to physically get up and move around and take a picture. You can't just sit at your desk and pop the, the image. You have to move, you have to think. And sometimes I think for a lot of our students, moving is thinking for them. And this, this gives them an avenue, a venue in which they can do what they're good at and, and get success and get accolades for what they're doing. My my dream job is to be a CSI detective. I want this job because I like to discover things and I also like to think a lot. What I have to do at this job is discover crimes. For example, if a man kills a woman, the CSI have to find out where he killed her and why he killed her. I will get this job by going to college and studying to be a CSI detective. Jezebel wrote about how she wants to be a CSI detective, which is someone who is a crime scene investigator. So she wants to go to the crime scene and she wants to figure out how the crime was committed and how the person died. She's very interested in this and she writes about it extensively. Before you send the kids out, you always have to make sure that they have a focus, like what they're going to, how they're going to take that picture. Some of them it's very easy, and others, like this one, it's very difficult. I turn off these lights, and I only left the light over there on, and I, I, stood, on, I stood on this on over here, and I made the light hit, hit the tape so you could see that if it was like somebody shot him. So not that you want to give the kids the ideas, but you kind of have to help them along with, OK, how can I help you to create a crime scene in here? And you know, what do they use at a crime scene? So for her, she said they use the outline of the body. Whether she's seen that on TV or in real life, I didn't, I didn't ask her. I think learning through photography is an extraordinary program that has had a tremendous impact on our school. Um, and I think who says it best are, are our students. I ask them, you know, what does literacy through photography, how has that impacted you? And what resonates with me is that each and every child starts by saying it, it's a way for us to express our feelings in a very safe environment and they can, even though they may not be able to articulate or are concerned about saying out loud how they feel about certain issues and topics that affect them, they feel that through writing and through the literacy through photography program, they have a way that they can express their feelings in a very safe and a very um, meaningful way to them. So it's been tremendously beneficial to our school. I like how, um 
When you take pictures, you can turn something like simple into something more, more like creative. Like people don't really see, oh, like you take a picture of a, a car, what, um, they say, okay, that's a car, but they don't really tell a story about it. Like, like I wrote up on my sister and I wrote how sometimes she, she feels shallow about herself, like she's not really important. But to other people, that would be just a picture to my sister, like of my sister, like nothing more, nothing less. They, they tend to do their best writing when they're, you know, doing the learning through photography rather than because they're interested in it. And I think that's the big part. You know, they're given freedom to write about what they want to write about. And, you know, there's not really constraints on what they're writing about. At the beginning, I was scared. Like, I was afraid that people would think that my work is just one, uh, one silly pack of words. But she, like, she inspired me. They're able to write about things they're familiar with. I think that it's very difficult um, for children to write about things they're not familiar with. It's hard for you to write about a playground if you don't have a playground at your school. It's hard for you to write about the beach if you've never been to the beach. Um, it's, it's also difficult for teachers to find a subject that every child can relate to as they get older um, because you have to do different forms of writing. With LTP, the kids are creating their own writing based on their own life. Um, me and my stepdad, um, he took me on my birthday, he took me um, to the fire department and we, we just asked the fire department, we just knocked on the, on the door and, the, and we was just explaining them how the LTP and the learning to photography, like how was it, and there was a project and they said that yes, I could take pictures and they took out the fire engines and they let me put their equipment in there. I've had so many students dread picking up a pencil to begin writing. It's almost painful for them. Uh, so when I see a student grab a pencil and start writing about something they care about, it makes a huge difference. And it shows me that they're not adverse to writing. They're just adverse to the topics that we ask them to write about. So if you choose something that's more related to them and they can connect with, you're going to get better results. My dream job is to be a firefighter. The way I'm going to get this job is by going to get to going to college and to study to be a firefighter. I like this job because I love helping people and I like the outfits that they use. I want this job because when I was a little kid, every time I saw a firefighter, they would always say hi and then wave at me and be kind. That is why I want to be a firefighter, so I can also be kind to other people. The things I have to do in this job is be kind, help other people in need, and to listen to my boss because if I don't, I can lose my job. I really need to help people. The way I'm going to help people in fires is by breaking into the place that is on fire and getting the people out of the building to safety. I will be a firefighter and do good in this world. At this age of fifth and sixth grade, um, the children have a good perspective. Some of them see only the good in their neighborhood, which is great because every child has the right to a childhood. And then there's some of them that have led extremely difficult lives and they can't help but be a little bit jaded. I mean, they're very street smart. And then there are most that have a very good grasp of reality. They see the good, they know about the bad, and our job is to get them to really, you know, follow that good part and become a better member of society and try to stay away from the negative things that are surrounding this community. It feels really cool because now I know how it's gonna, how it's gonna feel when you put all that equipment on when I'm growing up because it's really heavy. I would love to be a judge because the f I love helping others and I don't want to see our world d be destroyed after the men helped build America. I don't want it to be destroyed by bad people. So I would love to like help the good citizens by putting the bad ones away. 
and you know they can't hurt anyone else. A judge has to listen to both sides of story. And pretty much in our class, there's no arguments, but there is disagreements. So you always have to listen to both sides and you depend on which one sounds like it really happened and it's not made up. So I think my class is teaching me how to become a judge. It allows them to talk about things that they're not allowed to talk about. But our kids are so very aware of what's going on in the neighborhood that this program allows them to talk about it without being blatant or putting themselves in danger. It's a safe way of talking about dangerous things. I had the word argument and I took a picture of like a police car and then I went to the 24th district and took pictures. Um, I went to the cemetery and took a picture and I took a picture of St. Christopher's Hospital because like you know how if you get into an argument and it turns into like a fight, you could you could have a knife or a gun and you'll end up in the hospital. Or if someone does die in the argument, you'll end up into the cemetery. And the arguments will lead to the cops coming and you go into the 24th district. My story was about uh, about my community and the shootings around my neighborhood. We went to Mother and West Waterland and I took a picture of a memorial of one of my friends that got killed, that were murdered. This is the diamond in the rough, and these kids are just some of I was trying to say that um, even though if your family member or your friend dies, they will still with, be with you forever. They're just, they're amazing. And what, um, what they have to deal with, oh my God, adults don't even have to deal with. So, you know, we want to just push them to have the best life that they can have. And when you read, when, when you read this as a teacher, I mean, you can't believe what they're going through. You just can't believe it. And then when you read about their dreams and their hopes, you just think, oh my gosh, I hope, <laughs> I hope they become that. I mean, you really do wanna take them through to make sure they graduate from high school. It's like a shame you only get them for one year. Mm -hmm. It's a great program on, in, in many ways. It, it, it first and foremost helps students tackle barriers that they never thought they could. And then after they do that, it helps in so many other ways. They get along. So my eventual goal for this would be to be able to establish kind of a, a lending library of cameras where teachers can start a lesson and allow their kids to take the cameras home for a night or to do something in their classroom. So to automatically start engaging that creative problem solving. So for kids who solve problems visually or through kinesthetic activities, this is a fantastic opportunity for them. You know, when they have trouble writing or they have trouble processing a teacher telling them how to do something, this is a way of showing that they understand in an alternative fashion. Education is more than about just learning from books and regurgitating information. It's about learning about yourself. It's about learning about one another. It's learning how to socialize and interact and take that knowledge and put it to use. So the fact that learning through photography helps break those barriers and allows kids to, to tackle the things that are very important and that are at the foundation of education is what makes it so exciting and um, what makes me love doing it every day and visiting these students and hearing about you know, their, their little excess, successes and accomplishments and they are so proud to stand up and read something because they've never written that much before and it's just amazing to see the smiles.
This project is great because it's the first time in all my years of teaching that I feel like something I'm doing is really worthwhile. I feel like this project supports my philosophy of teaching while still teaching the kids and they're still learning and they're still thriving and I'm not just teaching out of a book and I'm not teaching out of a teacher's guide and I am able to differentiate instruction and I'm still able to meet the state requirements but we're doing it in a much more creative, positive, fun way for the first time in 11 years. It's a great thing to be a part of.